tell us from your perspective how to lead a spiritual life in a modern day, modern age? In this question, we touch some very important points. <clears throat> First of all, what exactly is our modern age? We have to understand that in modern times, in the time of the internet and the fast travel, fast technology, mobile phones, tablets, computers, and all the technology that is so inherently part of our lives these days, human beings are facing challenges that they have never faced before, on many levels. Um, when it comes to the spiritual level, one of the biggest challenges that many spiritual practitioners, modern practitioners, have noticed is that our lives are becoming more and more hectic, simply. And that means, from a spiritual standpoint again, that our mind, which according to yoga and tantra and spirituality, is the most important tool for us to use in order to evolve spiritually, our mind is exposed to stimulation, agitation, and all kinds of bombardments of information, which is simply massive. And that makes it that the most important tool that you want to use to evolve is quite messed up. For a lot of people, our mind is so agitated that it's almost painful for us to even try to sit still quietly and try to concentrate. If I tell somebody today to even concentrate on reading a book, you find that for a lot of people it's too much. And we can't read more than one page in a book without having to do something else. Check my Facebook page, check this, do that, look at my emails, because the mind is simply super agitated for so many people. And that's where the problem is, because one of the most important things we do in yoga is not just that we work with the body and we stretch and we want to feel you know, like it's some good fitness. Yoga is not fitness, actually, not at all. Yoga is supposed to be a practice by which you use the tool, which is your own body, in order to create certain energy and resonance that will make your mind follow that into a deeper and deeper state. Of course, it's an oversimplification. Yoga is much more than that, but at least it gives you some idea. Now, when we try to do any kind of practice, if we do it with a very agitated mind, then the practice, the efficiency of our practice, is diminished exponentially. When we are managing to actually use our mind, be able to focus and concentrate the mind, and be able to direct it to the results that we're looking to achieve, the effects are very, very powerful. And that's where the problem is, because in modern times, as I said, the biggest challenge being that the mind is so agitated for so many people, it's very difficult to really talk about any spiritual practice. I know it's not very popular, perhaps, to make such a statement, because a lot of people are very happy with the fact that they are creative, jumping around, the mind is so alert, and they, you know, simply finding themselves having all kinds of bubbling thoughts and ideas all the time, and we consider that in many cases to be a success, like, wow, what a creative person, what an interesting personality. But from a yogic standpoint, spiritually speaking, we need to remember that the objective is not just to be creative or just to impress people or to have a very vibrant lifestyle. The objective is to interiorize. Sounds very boring when you put it like that. Interiorize? Oh my God. I'm just supposed to sit there and, what, do nothing? I, you know, I've got things to do. And that kind of way of thinking shows that for a lot of people to interiorize, to actually be with yourself, is a big challenge because of the nature of modern life. Let's not forget, by the way, that the modern lifestyle that we lead and generally how the world is structured today is challenging on other levels. Having diet for most people, which is very unhealthy, also triggers all kinds of problems for the mind. The fact that all kinds of diseases that simply didn't exist in 100 years ago or more now are rampant, we find that that also is a big challenge because as experience shows it's very difficult to meditate, to practice, to try and interiorize 
when your body is painful, when you have a sickness. You can't concentrate, you can't do much. And on top of that, we find that the way that we are educated in modern times, the education system, can be very flawed in many ways. We find that there are so many challenges that we are facing on a global scale, politically, economically. And if you put all that together with the fact that the world is so agitating for us, everybody today are glued to their mobile phones and their screens and their tablets and so on, and all these images coming by, more information, more stuff, then I'm telling you, okay, stop all that, sit, interiorize, and meditate. For most people, it's a shock to the system. They simply can't do it. And that's why the challenge is when we say, how can you lead a spiritual life in modern time? You need to make some choices. You need to decide, first of all, can you somehow simplify your life? Do you have to be part of the rat race? Do you have to be part of this information technology, this intensity that bombards the mind all the time? Or maybe you can be leading a very happy life without checking your Facebook page every day. Or without reading emails and you know chatting and whatever else people do all the time. If we can somehow cut down slowly, gradually, it's like weaning off some bad habits. If you can cut down on all these things that trouble the mind so much and agitate the mind so much, you will find that your mind will naturally start becoming more accessible to you because the mind is an important tool to learn about your true self. And the funny thing is that most people don't even know who they are. I mean, if you ask the average person, who are you? Most people would just state their names, their job, and all kinds of descriptions of stuff that they do. But we all know that that's not who we really are. Because, for example, if a person is an engineer, and that's who I am, are you telling me that if that person changes the profession to becoming a doctor or some other profession, he's not the same person anymore? Obviously, our profession, or many other things that define us, so to speak, are not actually who we are. And that's why the surprising thing is that most people live 24-7 with a stranger, which is your true self. You don't even know who you are. You are living in the same house, so to speak, with a stranger. And then when you leave that person alone, imagine if I take away your mobile phone, your computer, whatever, and just put you in a room for a week. Just you'll have food, but nothing else. Not even newspapers, magazines, nothing. Just alone in a room. Most people will consider that a form of suicide or something. They would consider that terrible torture. And yet, why would it be such? You have your basic needs. You can sit, relax, think, meditate. For most people, it sounds like a terrible challenge. And that's because of the condition the mind is for most people. If you cut a person off from the stimulation that we are so you know, addicted to in modern times, it can be a very big issue. And when we speak about a spiritual lifestyle, it has to always involve this ability to interiorize, to be quiet mentally, emotionally, even physically, and start feeling what's happening inside of you. Because if you do that, you will discover at some point, if you follow the right kind of practice, that there's a whole universe inside of us. There's a huge, vast space, more than that, inside of us, which is so fascinating, actually which is so amazing, and we need to get to know that because eventually we will all have to face it sooner or later. You can't have you know, stimulation forever. At some point, things will stop. For example, when we will die, it happens. Of course, the more modern materialistic point of view is that when a person dies, then it's game over. You bury the person, or however you dispose of the body, and you say goodbye, and there's nothing more to it. It simply lights out. But the yogic tradition of India and Tibet show us that actually this is not the end of the line. There's much more which comes and very, very important things are following. And when you have educated yourself all your life to be agitated, intense and so on, you don't have the tools to deal with what is coming. And that's why by meditating, the yogis say that you prepare yourself for whatever comes later on, and in this life, it gives you an important, extremely powerful tool, which is your own mind in a state of peace, focus, 
that can get you even to higher states of consciousness and enlightenment. And that's why how to live a spiritual life in modern times is a great challenge. For most people, I would simply recommend, if you can't manage by yourself, which is the case for a lot of people, take a vacation. Simply take a few months off, join some retreats, courses where these things are taught, separate yourself from that intense environment, and try to look into yourself with the right kind of guidance, with the right kind of support, and then you will see what tools you need and how you want to apply them in the future.